I think there are two major uh, stories here. One is when you look up into the night sky, most of the stars you see at night have planets, just like our sun has planets. So planets are common. We didn't know that before, but now we know that planets are very common. The second most important thing is that there are more and more of the smaller and smaller planets. And we didn't know that beforehand. This is marvelous. It could be that our universe had mostly Jupiter-sized planets, mostly Saturn-sized planets. And here we are lucky to be on the Earth and our uh, human existence is made possible because there happens to be an Earth here. But if Earth-like planets are rare, well, then we humans would be, of course, on one of the rare Earth-like planets that can sustain life. But now we know that Earth-sized planets are very common. There are more and more of the smaller and smaller ones. This is new information. We never knew this before. Uh, even the ancient Greeks, Aristotle, asked, are Earth-like planets common or rare in the uh, universe? And now we have an answer to Aristotle's question. With the announcement that we've just made, uh, we have found hundreds of planets that are nearly the size of the Earth. We're announcing 1,200 new planets. But what's really exciting is that most of them are as small as our own Earth, or nearly as small as the Earth. So it's, 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 is it, a, I mean, is it, is it a gradual step forward or is it a leap? This is an enormous uh, tsunami of planets. Uh, up until now, we only knew of 500 planets, and now we've just announced 1,200 planets. So we're tripling, more than tripling, the number of planets known in our universe. And that's, of course, an enormous leap forward. But even more, we found for the first time that there are more and more of the smaller and smaller planets. There are more Neptune-sized planets than Jupiter-sized planets, and there's more planets nearly the Earth size compared to Neptune size. So our universe has more and more of the smaller planets edging closer to the size of our own Earth. Even more than anticipated or? There wasn't any anticipation. We really didn't know. Uh, there's no good theory uh, that allows you to predict how many Earth sized planets there should be compared to Neptune size compared to Jupiter size. We astronomers are just ignorant. We, we really don't know what kinds of planets are out there, how many of different sizes, and we're just learning for the first time. There are also, I mean, among these, there are around 50 or 60 in the habitable zone. Right. So what can we tell about these interesting guys? What's very interesting is that some of the planets orbit their star quite close, so close that they receive a lot of light from the star and the planets are heated up to very high temperatures, uh, blowtorched, if you will. And so those hot planets, even if they had water, would lose their water. It would evaporate away. Other planets are very far from their host star, so far that those planets are very cold. They receive not very much light from the star. So there's a special zone in between. And in that zone, if a planet resides there, it's not too hot. Not too cold, but as Goldilocks said, just right. Uh, it's got a temperature between zero and 100 Celsius that allows water, if any is there, to be in liquid form. And of course, it's liquid water that's in our bodies, and liquid water is necessary for the biochemical reactions of life. So it's wonderful that Kepler has found 58 planets that reside in this habitable zone. Those are planets that are lukewarm, which offers the possibility of life on them. And how, I mean, because the, the, the forward aim is found in these Earth-like planets. I mean, among these 50, 58 planets, I mean, how Earth-like planets have you f found, actually? I would say that Kepler, with this fantastic announcement of 1,200 new planets, some of them in the habitable zone, many of them are small, I have to say, I think none of them is definitively a habitable planet. And here's why. Yes, some of the planets are lukewarm between 0 and 100 degrees Celsius. 
But those planets in the habitable zone, some of them are small, but they're not the same size as the Earth. They're all quite a bit bigger than the Earth, 50%, 70% bigger than the Earth. And such a large planet, bigger than the Earth, probably has large amounts of water and gas, hydrogen and helium gas, surrounding a rocky core. And so those planets would not have a hard surface to stand on. There'd be no way for water, even if it is in liquid form, to puddle into lakes and oceans and serve as the, the cocktail mixer for the chemistry of life. So we haven't found any definitive habitable planets yet. So among th these five almost Earth-sized planets, among these 1,200, uh, you don't think that they are really habitable in that sense? It's possible that these five planets that are a little bigger than the Earth that reside in the habitable zone, they might be rocky. They might have liquid water somewhere in their atmosphere or maybe even on a surface deep down. Maybe life has a chance, but we can't say for sure. And it's always good in science to make sure we communicate what is the clear truth and what is speculation. And for those five planets, they're very intriguing. I'm very excited to know what those five planets are actually like, whether indeed they have life on them. But right now, uh, it, it, you couldn't say for sure that they are habitable worlds like our own Earth. But a hint that <coughs> will keep it going on, I mean, this is just the first two quarters of data released. Do you think the Earth custom will pop up in the next year or perhaps the next few years? What's very, very exciting is that we're finding planets now for the first time that are in the habitable zone, but we're just finding a few. And the reason is that the uh, Kepler data that we're just now releasing uh, is only the first 130 days of those data. And so what would be really exciting is to wait for another half a year or year when Kepler will have better quality data because the planets continue to go around and around and we get more and more information. And so there's a good chance that we'll be able to find smaller planets the size of the Earth in that habitable zone if we wait for another year or two. And uh, to be honest, I think we will get there. We will find them.